बजे उन्हें आमा हो दस महीना एक नंबर के ना रखे ना पति बंसर माँ उन्हें बोल का आये हुए बराए हो तीस तो क्यों तीस कौन में तीस तो अब क्यों आने वाले From 2012 to 2015, we received around 433 cases from only from Qatar, especially by our outreach officer. And we have, if we speak about this year, we received almost 319 cases from Qatar. 319 cases. Yes. In this case, what happened is like uh, the RL promised them that you have get 11 to 1400 uh, salary, real salary in the Qatar, but they didn't get anything. They just get back in Nepal after nine months without anything in their hand. Okay. Mm -hmm. World Cup ground, ma, Juni, our Australia, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, Pakistan, our country, Nepal, कामदार हो रहे जून गैर काम करने दिशा इलाज़ ही कसरी गौर सा कसरी ची कामदार हो रहे इस रोची तरह मर्यादित बनाऊं सा बनने के लिए तो अब आइली इसी बनाऊं सा की नहीं किसने अब चार दिन तो ओल्ड कप को लगी चार हजार ही मंची ठंके डेट ऊंच सा बनने के लिए ची वो तो तो बोली को करा ले बताऊंगी आइली � तो मतलब लाख सौ त्यां को सूची सन त्यां को जून चाहे टेम्परेचर त्यां को ये उड़ा बाता हम बोलना त्यां को चाहे रोन सन को कारण नहीं करता जति चार हजार मानचे हरु बंदा पन मेरा आपनो अनुभव मेरा आपनो फीलिंग में आजाएं मेरा आपने थिंकिंग में आजाएं चार हजार बंदा पनी बड़ी और जो त्यां से दिए तो उनसे बन Saya katakan saya ada reflex, aktif, kontak sama kau. 
Tirfitzati, Tirfitz or a Bishop Lombatio, and he bets at Kay Dirin. They yoked up home didn't you? And he ordered to Urni to Kimon Satia. Okay, the Urni ordered didn't you? And Syrian you didn't you? And he can't put out a candy van or Afilkin Botte. A pretty upon swords and a man say, Okay, Thomas and Borsan. And he and the Kamek didn't rock it, Kamrok de Pesavata, they are a coroned Hani, Tarconi, and she had your lonely as to. I काम जाने में जाओ ना जाने में मो सीधे आओ सीआईडी पुलिस संग पकड़े रहा जेल में रह रहा जान पाला बने में अन्य यो किलिंग कर दे कर दे ताले को मार चल तेरे पेरिंस के दिन को अब दो तीन जाना सम मर सकते हो सीधे सेंटर शिराटन होटल में दो तीन In concluding, we are facing a complex investigation with many international implications. The prosecution is ongoing and will take time. It would not be professional to communicate to you today a detailed timetable. The world of football needs to be patient. By its nature, this investigation will take more than the legendary 90 minutes. It wasn't about looking at uh, countries on their merit and what they had to offer in terms of a World Cup bid. It was about the deals, the counter deals, the double deals, 
uh, that went on behind closed doors. That's the key point in relation to the whole bidding process. We had a budget in front of us which showed that approximately six and a half million dollars was allocated, two and a half million to Asia, four million dollars to Africa, and I asked, well, what, what's this for? You know, what, what are we doing? And the answer would be, oh, you don't need to know that. All of those discussions and negotiations went on behind the scenes. And to the point where I say in relation to the Australian bid, there was almost two bids. There was the public bid, um, for which, uh, for the time I was there, I was largely responsible. And there was a bid that went on behind closed doors. That uh, we may be the lucky country. I was a little concerned about some of the things related to the bid. I always remember very early on in January 2009, we had one of our international consultants visit us in Sydney and he talked to us about the things for which he was responsible for and that was the bid book, the technical inspection and the final presentation. And he made the point that they all needed to be very good and very high quality, but he also said that none of them counted. And yet those three things, when you matched it up against the selection criteria for the bids, um, they should have been important. But when questioned about why they weren't important, um, the answer was, well, you know, these things get decided by other things. And in fact, it was, we were even told that the executive committee wouldn't even bother reading the bid book. The best example of it in relation to Australia is, uh, it came, happened in about September 2010, so approximately two months before the vote was taken. When we eventually found out that almost uh, around about US half a million dollars was paid over to Jack Warner, who was then the president of CONCACAF, for the upgrade of a stadium in Trinidad and Tobago. That didn't make sense for a whole lot of reasons. One, why did Australia or anyone feel compelled to have to give money to upgrade a stadium in Trinidad and Tobago? And the answer to that is because everyone looked at the executive committee members who were on the committee and what sorts of favours um, they wanted. So that was one of the, uh, the flaws within the, the governance of the bidding process. The second thing is in this instance, the money didn't end up in the bank account of Trinidad and Tobago Football Association. It ended up in Jack Warner's personal bank account. The fact of the matter is, that what has been revealed so far is a mafia-style crime syndicate in charge of this sport. My only hesitation in using that term is that it is almost insulting to the mafia because the mafia would never have been so blatant, overt, and arrogant in its corruption. People want change. People. People love football, but they don't love FIFA. And, and when I say they don't love FIFA, it's not about the staff of FIFA. It's about the people who head it up, the executive committee, the president. Um, and people want to be able to have confidence, have trust that the decisions that are made by that executive committee is in a way consistent with what we expect of our international organisations and governments. I know you're in Puerto Rico, as you told me, but I want you to get a hold of me some which way. I'm setting up this thing with Don. I'll set it up for Monday or Tuesday, uh, at, uh, probably at Boca Raton or wherever, he's, wherever his office is at, Port Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. Now, through Al Braverman, they're going to get a shot to do it. And you also, because you got the people, naturally. So let's see. And he wants, and he wants to talk, he only wants to 
absorb the principles. You don't want any other bullshit around, he said. Charles, try and get back to me. I managed Leon Spinks, former heavyweight champ. I managed Tyrone Booz, former cruiserweight champ. Junior middleweight champ Buster Drayton, featherweight champ Freddie Norwood, and for a, the briefest of periods, a guy named uh, Jose Rivera, who was the welterweight champ. You fix fights to make betting money. You fix fights to get a fighter a championship. You fix fights to maneuver a fighter up the ranks toward a championship fight. You fix fights to win in order, again, to position someone strategically. You fix fights to lose in order to get paid and in order to make, you know, betting coups. The way you fix fights varies greatly. You fix fights by buying judges. That's and, you know, that's one easy way to do it. You fix fights by having the referee working for you so that if there's any way that the ref can stop a fight in your guy's favor, he does. You fix fights by colluding with the fighters, generally the loser. It's, all, it's almost always a loser. Um, winners almost never know that the fight is fixed. One of the things that you're cognizant of when you are fixing fights is that you're doing something illegal. Something that theoretically can wind you up, you know, wind you in jail and, and get people angry at you. So you never really say anything. You know, nothing that's culpable. So there's a code. And if you're in boxing for a while, you know the code. Everybody knows the code. You will go uh, into a gym where there's either a trainer or a manager, and you're looking for somebody your guy can beat. This is how these guys make their money. And it's interesting that people who lose in boxing, generally speaking, if they're professional losers, can make more money than winners. Winning costs money. Losing makes money. Now, that's not true, obviously, at an elite level. But at almost every other level, it's the case. So what you do is you say, I've got a guy and he is looking for work. Looking for work is the first. Okay, so it means that he needs to win, and, you know, and you want to keep him busy. The response to that is, I've got somebody, and generally the second phrase is, but he hasn't been in the gym too much. Okay, so the subtext there is he's, he's not in good shape. And so you're honing in on where this thing is going to go. And you say, that, that, that's OK. You know, I'd like a guy to get in a, a, a few rounds. That means it's going to be a knockout. At which point he goes, well, you know, OK, I can do that. But really, my, my guy isn't in shape to go more than three or four. That's OK. So you've just fixed the fight. Nobody has done anything illegal. Nobody's done anything where they've come out and stated anything explicitly. But that's a done deal. And you get you get what you pay for. Can you say how many fights you fixed? <sighs> hundreds. How many, I'm not sure, but hundreds. I see it all the time now. I mean, I don't make my living in boxing anymore, but I see fixes all the time, sure. It will always exist. It always has, it always will. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening with over 90 countries in six continents tuning in. It's showtime! Vegas, I think, tends toward the sensational. 
Irish Hurricane Peter McNeely. Now keep laughing. Keep laughing. They'll feel funny, huh? If you go, if any one of you doesn't respect me or what I'm doing or what I've been doing for the last three months since it's been announced, you're going against a guy like this, you have a big dump in your pants. Talk to him, Peter. I'm Hurricane Peter McNeely from Medfield, Mass. On Saturday night, watch me kick Tyson's ass. But if you haven't made your pay-per-view arrangements yet, make them soon. Because remember what happens when I wrap you in my cocoon. McNeely's manager was a guy named Vin Vecchioni. Vecchioni had no money, so I, for a while, was bankrolling what they were doing. I was bringing McNeely and sometimes, and Vecchioni to New York for various things, you know, and I was making fights for Peter. So, I mean, I knew them very well, and I was very involved in what was going on. So I bring Vecchioni to Al Braverman's office, who's Don King's director of boxing, and we work out a deal for McNeely to be Tyson's first opponent, which is a completely win-win situation for everybody. I'm just happy to be here. Everybody's made their statements. Um, Mr. McNeely had a cute statement. I'm just re ready to fight. Thank you, everyone, for your support. Thank you. I get a phone call from a guy whose voice I recognize, but not not somebody I really know. But, it, you know, and he said, look, somebody thought I should give you a call to let you know um, that a bet got made, that the fight wouldn't, yeah, I'm trying to remember how he described it. I think he told me the fight won't go it's, it's not gonna go 90 seconds. It was, uh, you know, it was a million dollar bet and the fight's not gonna go 90 seconds. Somebody thought you might be interested in that. Mills Lane, stop that nonsense because they were starting to butt heads. Oh, Tyson with a left the right up and that down goes McNeely again. McNeely's hurt this time, Steve. He's very hurt. He can barely stand up. And his hands are the number of seconds left. They want Tyson. 89 seconds, at which point Vin Vecchioni steps between the ropes to prompt the ending to the fight. Correct. That was not correct. That was not correct. Vecchioni, who really had this thing figured out, understood that it was crucial that there be no finding of impropriety because Tyson was the machine on which boxing ran, by far the biggest earner in the world. And, Mike Tyson weighs in at you know, when, when he fights in Vegas, they generate a, a billion dollars in added revenue. I mean, not from boxing per se, but you know, for, from all of the ancillary re revenue. So it has to be okay. And Vecchioni knows that. So he gets his payday, whatever it is, and I don't know what it is. I never did know what it was. And I get a phone call from, from him. And I'm still in Puerto Rico. He goes, oh, yeah, you gotta come to the house, I gotta see you. And I said, I'm, I can't do it, I'm, I'm still out of the country. And he says, send somebody you trust. And when that somebody got there, he was given an envelope, and that envelope put my son through college. I got hit, you know, I got knocked down. The man's quick, he hits hard. I felt like the, fir I felt like the first knockdown was a, uh, a good, good quick punch. On my part, it was a little bit of a flash knockdown, I was okay. The second knockdown, as the film will show, I was shaking and I slipped and I fell on the rope and I, twi I twisted part of my knee. You see the, f hey, hey, you see the face, look at the film. Just look at the film, look at the film. My knee buckled, my knee buckled without even getting hit. Look at the film. Imagine that you're up against 
a very well-placed, high-profile machine that is capitalized to a degree that you can't even begin to imagine. A billion dollar, multi-billion dollar industry. So this is a guy with nothing except for his brain and his nerve. That is the greatest single underdog score that, that I've ever seen in, in all of my years in boxing. You know, the single most savvy maneuver that I've ever seen. no coração foi essa decepção Brasil em 30 minutos tomar cinco gols doloroso Aí é que chegou o mais importante, o papel ter o futebol. O futebol é muito bom, né? As crianças têm muito, muita escolinha aqui na escola, aqui na, na comunidade. Tem um amigo aí que tem uma, uma, duas, uma escolinha, tem o, um outro clube que tem dois, são dois, três, quatro, são cinco times. A comunidade apoia, tem sempre torneios, está sempre participando de torneios de... De, de, de comunidades. Daqui a gente reunia. E adultos, crianças, jovens. E era um, era um, passa, um passatempo, né? Uma área de lazer. A gente saía, costumava sair daqui uma hora da tarde para assistir juniores, é, aspirantes. O jogo de fundo era quatro horas. Indiferente a ser Vasco, Flamengo, Fluminense, qualquer tipo, clube, que, qualquer jogo que tinha, a gente se reunia aqui e ia para o Maracanã. E nessa que a gente ia, levava os filhos, levava o filho dos amigos. É, era o lazer do dia dia, do final de semana, o Maracanã. O Maracanã é tudo, né? Muito lindo. Quando você vai, Casa cheia, Maracanã cheio, teu time numa boa fase e você vê uma partida de futebol, é muito emocionante, não tem nada igual. Maracanã não tem igual, o maior estádio do mundo, tudo, tudo de bom, tudo de bom. E hoje a coisa está mais difícil, porque está muito caro. É que, poxa, não tem como ir. É, o Maracanã hoje virou um palco assim, de turismo pessoas que vêm de fora, porque o carioca, só aquele que tem uma condição financeira muito boa para ir, porque o salariado, o pobre, não pode mais, que é muito caro. Então, continua bonito? Continua. Só que para a alta sociedade, o pobre não tem mais esse direito de ir ao Maracanã para ver uma partida de futebol.
if we think about the stadium as a reflection of the city, we can say that the poorest fans have been expelled from the Maracana violently. They've had their places literally taken away from them. All around Brazil, people were asking this question, who is this really benefiting? And of course, we know the answers, and that's the elites, uh, the elite politicians, the very narrow uh, strata of the Brazilian, the highest classes. That's who the World Cup is for, not for the vast majority of Brazilian people. We're hypnotized by what's happening in the, the narrative of football, and no one wants to talk about issues because they just want to enjoy the circus. Um, now that the circus has gone, we can talk about these things again. And so it's a suspension of critical thought. It's a, it's a time of suspended animation where it's not just the country that stops, it's as if people's brains stop working as well. And so this is the, the crushing of, of dissent and debate about is this worth it? Can we do this? Should we do this? Who was the World Cup for? When the ball is rolling, those questions uh, were largely eliminated from public discussion. always the most vulnerable people that have this happen to them. We can go back to Seoul, 1988, to see the forced removal of tens of thousands of people from their homes there. Barcelona, 92, forced removal of immigrants' quarters in El Raval. Atlanta, 1996, forced removal of two African-American neighborhoods near the Olympic sites. Uh, not so much in Sydney, but then the forced removal of tens of thousands of Roma people from, from Athens. 2008, really, two million people moved from the center of old Beijing, uh, London, similar cases of displacement. And then again, we'll see this in Rio 2016, similar in South Africa. So this is, is a repeating theme that has different power articulations on particular places. Thomas Bach is saying that we need reform because the Olympics are in a slow motion crisis right now. And you only need to look at the bidding for the 2022 Olympics to realize that. Because voters, who, any voter who had the chance to vote on it in a referendum said, we don't want the Olympics. From Munich to Stockholm to Krakow uh, to the Canton in Switzerland that got to vote on it. So he is in a crisis. Comparing FIFA and the IOC, because they're in a crisis at the IOC, they know they need to change. Human rights need to be part of the equation for both the Olympics and for FIFA. I mean, right now, it's not at all a part of the way things are decided. I mean, just look at the evidence. Beijing, 2008. Uh, Sochi, 2014. Then there's Russia, 2018. Qatar, 2022. You can't tell me human rights are a serious consideration when you make those selections. The idea that politics and sports don't mix is a fairy tale that people at the IOC and FIFA tell themselves to console each other around the evening fire. It's just totally untrue and it's ridiculous to say so and it really shows a selective ethics on their part. The way it plays out for politicians in Beijing or Vladimir Putin in Sochi is they get to stand on the world stage and look legitimate alongside this incredibly popular event known as the Olympics. And so they get to sort of uh, enjoy the Olympic halo effect, if you will. And meanwhile, brush aside all their human rights violations and all their problems you know, with their, their democratic practice.
One thing that we've seen is that independent of the global economy, which has periodic fluctuations, the fluctuations of the profits of FIFA and IOC only go like this. They only go up and up and up. And that means that they are completely disassociated from any economic reality for the, of the places where they go. And the Olympic motto, bigger, stronger, faster, also could apply to the size of the games. Every Olympics is always bigger, it's always more. And so this idea that the event itself has to reflect the competitive nature of sport has to stop. Veteran NBA referee is under investigation for allegedly betting on his own games. The gambling scandal has ties to the Gambino crime family. Tonight, a former NBA referee accused of betting on his own games and working for the mob fears for his life. One year and three months behind bars for disgraced NBA referee Tim Donahue. My name is Tim Donaghy. I'm the former NBA basketball referee that was involved in the gambling scandal in 2007 to where I used information that I obtained from other referees in the league office based on relationships that existed between referees and owners, referees and coaches, and referees and players, and used that information knowing what was going to happen in an NBA game and used uh, that information to pass along the people associated with organized crime for a monetary gain. It all fell apart um, because at the end of the year, um, you know, some of the people associated with organized crime were heard talking over a wiretap. So it got back to the FBI and they started a big investigation. And when I got there, I basically told them the truth that I, uh, you know, was somebody who had gambled a lot. Uh, in general and gambled on NBA basketball games and they wanted to know how I was able to win so many games without fixing them and it, it took a while and several meetings but I explained to them that the relationships that existed both positive and negative between the referees and the players and the coaches and the owners spilled out onto the floor and through their investigation and speaking to you know coaches and owners and players and, and former referees uh, they came to the conclusion that what I was telling them was the truth. I think we have here a rogue, isolated criminal. The NBA reacted by basically saying that I was just one bad apple in the bunch and, uh, you know, trying to throw me under the bus. But what happened was is, uh, you know, they, they did a huge investigation and the FBI came out and, and supported me 100% and said that everything that I said was truthful and that the NBA had a lot of problems that they needed to clean up. NBA arenas are basically uh, packed with 20,000 people. It's a, like a Broadway show when you have beautiful cheerleaders, you have the greatest athletes in the world running up and down the court doing things that most people could only dream of. So it's packed with excitement and, and people love to be a part of it. At the NBA level, especially during the playoffs, the league would really dictate what they wanted called in a game, and that would put a team at a huge advantage or disadvantage moving forward in a playoff series. And it was always a situation where they were uh, extending a playoff series because the amount of revenue an additional game would be in a seven-game series was always something that was in the back of the referee's mind. Everything's fueled by money, and they know each additional game is, uh, you know, tens of millions of dollars into the, uh, you know, league office. So it's, it's it's a culture of, you know, the bottom line, which is money. It was just a commonly known practice that the stars ran the league in the NBA. The stars sold the shoes and the jerseys, and the bigger market team is what got the NBA global attention and better ratings. So we all knew that, you know, we needed to give them an advantage, you know, and some way, shape, or form, and that's what a lot of the veteran referees did, and that's what a lot of the veteran referees pass along to the younger referees. As a young referee in Philadelphia, uh, the Bulls were in town to play the 76ers, and that year they 
uh, gave us points of emphasis as referees that they wanted to call uh, during a game. And one of them was a spin move on the baseline. And I'll never forget, I was the referee on the play that was responsible to call that if it took place. And Michael Jordan did it, went up and you know had a monstrous dunk and I waved it off and I called the travel. And right after I made that call, there was a timeout. Jordan rushed up to me, Phil Jackson came at me, 20,000 people in the stadium booed me even though it was an away game for the Chicago Bulls. And Jordan said, you know, what are you calling that for? And I said, you know, you got the same training tape we got. That's the move that they want called to travel. And uh, both Phil Jackson and Michael Jordan said to me, they may want that call to travel, but they certainly don't want to call it on me. And Phil Jackson pointed to him and said, they don't want that called on him. And it was something that really stuck in my mind because it bothered me that 20,000 people were booing at me the whole Bulls team was coming at me, and everyone was kind of amazed that I made that call. So I spoke to the you know, lead referee in the locker room, and he said, yeah, you have to realize that you, know, you don't call that against the star. You let that go, and you call that against the lesser players. When they have a point of emphasis that they want cleaned up in the NBA, you, you don't do it against the star players. I think when you talk about gambling in the NBA with the referees or even the players, obviously the referees like to go to the casinos. We like to gamble uh, even on the NBA floor with betting on who would call the first foul of an NBA game. Basically, when you were refereeing an NBA game with uh, two of your good friends that you would bet $20 uh, because that's what the tip was for the ball boy. So we would say, Whoever uh, called the first foul of the game had to put up the $20 tip for the other two guys. So we'd go out on the floor and we'd be running up and down the uh, court and we'd you know, be letting fouls go because nobody wanted to call the first foul in a game because then you were responsible to pay that ball boy. So you know, we'd have bodies flying all over the place and nobody would be wanting to blow the whistle you know, two, three minutes into a game, which is unheard of, of a foul not being called because of a $20 bet in the locker room. The supervisor of officials at the time came in the locker room at halftime and basically said, what the hell happened at the beginning of the game? None of you guys were blowing the whistle. I didn't want to blow the whistle. They didn't blow the whistle either because we had a bet, $20. And he just said, well, I don't want to know anything about that and walked out. But nothing was ever done about it. So the league office knew that it had taken place at times. I believe for sure that the NBA didn't sue me because the last thing they wanted to do was having some of their referees, owners, or league personnel testify under oath that a lot of the things that I was saying did take place and were true and it would be very detrimental to the league. So what they wanted to do was just you know, hopefully put me in jail for uh, a long period of time and have this thing blow over. But it kind of backfired on them a little bit. And I was given uh, 15 months in prison and I was able to write the book and tell my story, which was something that they tried to squash immediately by going into the offices of Random House and, and getting my book deal squashed at first and going into the offices of 60 Minutes and trying to get them not to air the episode.
olmasam ne olur? Benim için şampiyonluk bitti. Abi, benim senin, o. Senin resmen abi, bir, abi, bir defa git bir defa. Abi benim var mı? Kaç kişi yok abi? Kime çıkayım? Rica ediyorum. Bak kamera yapıyorum. Başbakan benim pokarımı verme diye sen orada hata yapıyorsun. Hata yapamam mı? Niye? Hata yapayım. Ağır ağır rica ediyoruz. Ben de rica ediyorum. Ya kardeşim. Ya ya ya sen beni sevmek durumunda diyesin ben değilim ama abi ben tahammül edelim. Abi tahammül lütfen. Tahammül edelim. Sen memleketimi rezil etmiyorsun. Tahammül edelim. Bırak. Memleket sen sadece memleket yanlış. Sen de gibi Trabzon'da yazık olsun abisi. Sizin gibilerin yüzünden burada kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım. Kupa alalım.
İstanbul Büyükşehir Belediyesi Fenerbahçe, Kardemir Karabük Spor Fenerbahçe, Fenerbahçe Ankara Gücü, Sivas Spor Fenerbahçe, Trabzonspor Bursa Spor, Eskişehir Trabzonspor ve Trabzonspor İstanbul Büyükşehir Belediyesi Spor Yüksek Mahkeme Türkiye'de çeşitçe suçunu tamamen onaylamış durumda. Ceza yargılamasında Trabzonspor'u temsil ediyoruz. Hem de sportif yargılamada hem Türkiye'deki ayağını hem Avrupa'daki ayağını yürütmeye çalışıyoruz. Az Yıldırım evet o dosyanın en önemli sanıdır ama tek sanı da değildir. Ee, Türkiye Mahkemesi yani 16. Ağır Ceza Mahkemesi, İstanbul 16. Ağır Ceza Mahkemesi şirke suçunu tespit etti, sanıklara ceza verdi. Ee, bazı sanıklar hakkında da bu ceza Yargıtay tarafından onaylandı ve kesinleşti. Ama e, bir türlü bu cezalar infaz edilmiyor, e, adalet sağlanmıyor. Yani bundaki en büyük sebep de e, Fenerbahçe Kulübü'nün e, taraftar sayısının çokluğu, siyasi gücünün, ekonomik gücünün fazlalığı, Türkiye'nin en büyük olduklarının Fenerbahçe'yi e, desteklemesi, e, siyaseten tüm partilerin e, oy beklentileri nedeniyle Fenerbahçe Kulübü lehine davranması nedeniyle e, henüz bu ceza infaz edilmiş değil. Thank <laughs> you.